Ooh, that was, that was. Bellas, Bellas, please. Careful, little guy. Welcome to 20 Minutes Underground, yes. your weekly online reptile for YouTube for show for reptile enthusiasts. Like Kenny! Nigeria! What up? How y'all doing? All right, you're welcome. Have a great day. That's why he's here. Like Bailey! Bailey! That's why she's here. You got a two for today. This week on Tournaments Underground, we look at some Madagascar animals, some cool stuff and some bugs. Pete the Bug Man and cool chameleons. If you've ever seen a chameleon, if you've ever, the first time you, chameleons are just cool. There's just no other way to put it. Chameleons, a panther chameleon is a chameleon. The variety, the color change. I remember the first time I saw a chameleon. If you're, if you're a kid watching this thing and you look at these animals, you guys got it so, I mean, you got, what, what's the name of that show that's on now? What's that show? That's BBC show. Earth, planet Earth. Oh my goodness. We didn't have nothing like that. When I was a kid, we had this thing called the Encyclopedia Britannica. And you turn the pages and we saw these pictures of these animals. It was like, oh my goodness, do these exist? These days, you guys got it so good. You're spoiled. You don't deserve this show. You don't deserve this show. Okay? I'm done talking because you don't deserve this show. Maybe. Have a great week. Love you guys. Oh, Hello, fellow bug people out there. It's Pete, the bug man. Look what I got for you today. This is a classic Chinese mantis, praying mantis. Still a baby, as you see, it is very thirsty and it's drinking off the droplets of water on my little finger. Isn't that cool? Really cool animal. This mantis will get probably about four inches. It's a classic. It's like everybody's happy since they were a little kid. Everyone's like, I have a praying mantis, what kind? This is probably the one. These are everywhere. And then they lay a lot of eggs in their egg sac. You get about probably maybe 200 babies sometimes, maybe more. Maybe sometimes 100, it depends. A lot of little babies come out. As soon as they come out, they stop molting. And once they realize the other one is next to them, I'm gonna eat you. They're cannibalistic. So you gotta keep these completely alone by themselves. They're solitary animals, only when breeding time. And then that's when the female eats the male. What a way to go. But that's the only time they're together. Otherwise, these mantids are totally solitary. Eat anything they can overpower. Some big ones are known to eat small little hummingbirds and stuff like that, which is amazing for an insect like this. But normally they eat moths and crickets and other mantids, whatever they can grab. Very intelligent animal too. I mean, they're really smart too. They have fairly good eyesight. They hunt by sight, so they see. And they got those big forearms, graspers, that have spines on them. And they're pretty sharp and they hold their prey in. And then they bite the nerve cord of the, of the cricket. They grab the back of the head so they don't get bit by the animal themselves. And they start biting the nerve cord and they start feeding on the animal. It's, not a good way to go. But um, really cool animal. I mean, they don't live that long, unfortunately. You know, they, they live up to about a year. Maybe some larger mantids from other parts of the world can live up with two years as an adult. But mostly they're like nine months to a year, somewhere around there. Uh, but they breed rarely and you get a lot of babies. I think you can always have tons of babies around. And it's really, they're good for classrooms, good for bug talk. You know, you bring them on parties and stuff like that, bug parties, you know, reptile parties. People always like to look at these things. And they're not squeamish for people like, oh, it's a bug, get it away from me. <laughs> these aren't like that. These are really cool. They're not scary looking. Well, maybe if they were six feet tall, yeah, then you'd be in a little trouble. But really cool. There's so many different types of mantids in the world too. This is, I mean, this is one. There's so many different types that, that look, they don't even look like praying mantis. They're, they basically rely on uh, camouflage. So this one's green, 
and brown, so he'll be on the trees with the green and brown leaves. You won't even know he's there. Some mantis look like leaves, bunches of flowers and stuff like that. So it's really cool. It's a bug that lives and relies on basically just sitting there waiting for its prey to come by. So they sit and they don't they wait. See how this still he looks? He's cleaning himself now. But really cool. And most time the males are the ones that fly and have the wings. Females have wings, but their bodies get too fat. They really can't fly too much, so the males have to come to them to mate. And the females basically just hang out. It's great. But really cool bug. You guys think it is something easy to keep, fun to raise? Praying mantis is the way to go. So, so all you bug people out there, have fun. And keep on bugging. What's up guys? It's Cole from the Underground. I've got something exciting for you today. Can't say enough about these guys. Coolest animal ever. Do you see that? Wow. Thank you. Look at these. Panther chameleons. Lucifer Pardalis, I think. Just like crawling around. Amazing. These guys are absolutely stunning creatures. Look at this. I'm gonna set one of them down so I can talk about talk about them. But look. So what we got here, again, Panther Chameleons. These guys are from Madagascar. Small island. Almost 50% of chameleons are actually found there, 50% of the varieties. These guys are typically named by their locality. This is a, what we think, what an expert friend of mine, Manny, told me is a Sambava panther chameleon. And this one, I believe, is a I'm a Tavi panther chameleon. Anyway, they naturally have different colors depending on their locality, which is just really cool. I mean, as if one awesome creature wasn't enough, just within that island, they come in all these cool colors and varieties. When they are in the wild, they, uh, they'll eat anything from cockroaches to crickets, just to bugs. Even some small lizards, they, uh, in, in uh, captivity, they can live about seven years. So, this is, you know, this is a bit of an investment. These guys will be with you a while, as long as you take care of them. That's one thing about these, is they need a little bit more consistency, a little bit more close care than some of your other animals. They like moisture, and they gotta have that, uh, they gotta have that UVB too, that, that sunlight. So um, it's one thing to consider before you go and grab one of these just willy-nilly. These guys, uh, the guys, you guys need your love and affection. So um, just be aware of that. Uh, they, these guys, we got them in just recently, and they're already feeding great. You can see he's a little excited right now. He's got his bright colors on. You see that beard? How he puffs up like that? He's got that red and orange. Man. Absolutely stunning, I just, I'm overwhelmed by these. What was God thinking when he made that? Really? Yeah, amazing. Their incubation for their eggs is like six to 14 months. Incredibly long incubation for, you know, just, just seems like abnormally long. But I mean, it takes a long time to get this kind of beauty, don't you think? 
cool fact about the color change. So some people think that it's to blend in, and I'm sure that you uh, reptile freaks out there already know this, but that's actually not why they change colors. These chameleons actually change colors due to temperature, uh, their mood, like if they're excited, or if they're trying to breed or mate. The way they actually change colors is they have crystals in small cells beneath the surface of their skin that they can control the distance between. You know, depending on, you know, sun can, you know, relax them, make them further apart or closer together. And that filters out wavelengths and gives you the different colors that, that these guys are able to change into. Just, what? Are you kidding me? Absolutely incredible. Crystals, really. Okay. It's true. Look it up. Anyway. These are both boys. The boys carry all the color. I know. I know. Not fair, right? But, uh... The girls, they usually have, typically have a pink hue, pink or brown. Um, they can flare up too when they, like, let's say they've already made it and the male is trying to, you know, uh, approach her. She says, no, I've already made it and she can scare them off like that. But typically the males are the ones that are sought after because of these, because for obvious reasons, these crazy cool colors. Panther because of the spots and you can see some bands in there. Man. Anyway, uh, enclosures, they usually have a some sort of screen enclosure. You know, mist them down two to three times a day. Keep some leaves and stuff in there so that they can hold the moisture and that they can access it anytime they want. Mm. But other than that, just to be able to share this world with this animal. Man, amazing. Hey, only at the underground. Come get you some. That's 20 Minutes Underground this week. We hope you had a great time. We enjoyed having you. Although we really didn't have you, did we? You took your time and you watched the show and we're glad. And hopefully you learned something. Is that a cross or am I an X-Man? Cross X-Man. Cross X-Man. Sometimes I get really stupid. Hey, this week's question of the week is a doozy. Who turned you on to reptiles? For me, when I was growing up, my next door neighbor had a snake. I lived in Queens, New York, a little neighborhood called Howard Beach. And one of my neighbors had a boa constrictor. And then they went up to upstate New York and collected and they came back with a Eastern milk snake. And I remember I was eight or nine years old, I looked at this thing, I just couldn't believe how beautiful these animals were. Back then you can get a boa constrictor in a pet store for $19.99, I remember that. So that guy turned me on to snakes and has been in my heart ever since. I've been an animal freak from that moment on. Who turned you on to them? Uncle, father, or was it a TV show? Tell us. Best three answers gets free crap. Free crap is what? Good. Good stuff. Free crap is good. Thanks again for watching, guys. Appreciate you. And remember, if you can't take care of it, don't buy it. Of